Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Honestly Smartless. I'm Dr. Lindsay. And I'm Chelsea Toronto. And each week, we're just two dumb girls. So dumb. We're excited to roll out another... <laughs> another rebrand. We love rebranding so much. <laughs> it's our third. I love Canva. 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 The foundation of our friendship. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. I couldn't do it. She could. Now with the rebrand, Honestly Smartless, it just makes sense. We're so dumb. It's a cute, cuddly critter corner. Oh, yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> so funny every time. Good old Moo Dang, little baby hippo that everyone's obsessed with. She now has her own song. Just imagine an EDM track <laughs> set to the back of this. Moo Dang. Moo Dang. Moo, moo, moo Dang. My boing, my boing. Moo Dang. Sorry. I repeat for a minute. So I'm happy she has her own soundtrack. Maybe we should use that as an intro song. <laughs> uh, the other cute, cuddly critter only happens in Australia. A rogue koala caught in bed with this lady's husband. <laughs> like that, but just another story. The lady was caught in bed with another man. <laughs> this little, little koala bear got a little bit lost. He got through the doggy door. He made himself at home, snuggled up in bed. Mm hmm. <laughs> His girlfriend was freaking out. Oh my God, there's a koala in here. I'm trying to shoo it out with a blanket. The koala moves to the nightstand and makes <laughs> He's like, how about over here? Is this <laughs> Do I have to go all the way or can I just kind of kick it with you guys? You guys have a pretty good setup and the flat screen. They eventually they had to shoo him out with blankets and then he just left through the door. Grudgingly. <laughs> exactly. Fuck you, assholes. <laughs> I'd be so pumped if a koala bear was in my bed. <laughs> yes! A cozy critter live on assignment. <laughs> Curl up next to it and take selfies. You, the qual in the middle, and then Austin. We all had Santa hats on. Look out for my Christmas card. <laughs> Look at this koala. Yeah, that's my cute. Oh, that's critter. a good one. Speaking of cute, cuddly critters. Cuddly clones is the company. That's right. See, everything is cute, cuddly critters, cuddly clones. Or costumes. I was thinking about getting a pair of those myself. Was my face on it? That's adorable. Yes. <laughs> on one side, it's Layla's head, and the other side, it's me. Mm -hmm. From the front and the back. You could sit on my face. You would like that. No, no, I wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Not from you. You. I know. That was a weird thing for you to say, actually. That didn't feel like us. That's not usually coming out of your mouth. No. Just wanted to mess with you. <laughs> what are you buying? Oh, I'll tell you what I bought. Christmas decor. I started putting up the Christmas decor last weekend. And then I looked around thinking, there's not enough Christmas in here. When you walk in, I want it to be explosion of Christmas. Oh, fun. There's not enough garland. Yeah. I have to get the Christmas village set up. Yeah. I got to get more stuff at the tree. I ordered a bunch of stuff off, off of Amazon. And then whatever arrived in the Timu package today, I think there's Christmas stuff in there. How so, much did you order? I don't know, like three shipments worth. I ordered five things for the Christmas village. I ordered three more things with garland. I ordered more decor for the tree. A handful. Not excessive. I want you to walk in and be like, wow. I'm going to do it either way. <laughs> okay. You can count on me. <laughs> okay, good. I am impressed by things in life. Yes. Lindsay. <laughs> She's never impressed. I'm not impressed. I'm not even impressed by my own decoration at home. I'm impressed by everything. Oh, I got new pillowcases. That's exciting. Oh, oh that's good. And a new blanket. Yeah, because you were saying, what are you buying? Whoops, yeah. a daisy. I am going to treat myself to, um, I'm going to treat myself to more bedding. Ooh. Sheets. I love that. Sheets on um, pillowcases. I like what I have, but I want like the premier $150 for the pillowcases in a fitted. I don't really need much more than that, but um, I'm going to keep evolving my, my bed set. I know. And then you're influencing me to evolve my bed set. I might get more pillows for decoration and new sheets. I found a sheet that I haven't used in a long time. It's just a basic cotton one. It's actually pretty nice. Lindsay can't say words with two T's. <laughs> cotton. Or mittens. Mittens. <laughs> Rabbit. Oh, this one's one T, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not a I good speller, know. but last I checked, there's only why I was thinking. <laughs> and it doesn't even like underscore what I'm talking about. No, it does not. Uh, I need a new sweatsuit. Well, those Amazon sweatsuits, they tend to stain and stay stained. And then they shrink. I know. And you think you're getting a bargain. I do like them. You almost have to buy two. One is your schmecky. It will get greasy the minute you put it on. And the second one hangs up in your closet and it's your fancy one. <laughs> serious i know i know i just washed mine and i air dried it and i stretched out the pants before i dried them yeah i've yet to put them on because i'm afraid i'm afraid it's not gonna fit right is it the lulu ones you're worried about no the length of them the waistband always fits yeah yeah you don't really have a waist i don't <laughs> i'm all legs i'm afraid that the length of the sweatpant has shrunk and they're not gonna have that baggy effect i like 
by the way, they the um the Amazon pants shrink. They stay like a wide, full, like volume look, but they come up to the ankle. Yeah, I don't like that. I love it. That's what happened to my Lulus. They were baggy, and now they're at the ankle. Well, before you get rid of any ankle sweats, I like <laughs> I like that look. I'll hand them over. Okay, great. Um, aren't you going to be buying some perfume? Wait, can I? Thanks for. Can you just hold that thought? Amazon is now trying to compete with Timu. Everything on Amazon haul is now twenty dollars or less, and it ships from China. You get it in two weeks. They're like. Ah. We're going to be just like Timu and you're going to wait for it. And it's going to be super cheap. But I'd rather buy it off of Amazon and have it today. Limp Mike looks like all the dudes I've been sleeping with lately. Limpy. Limp dick. Well, I went to Ulta this week and I brought Butch and Sunny. They were in tow as they often are. They're a real big hit wherever they go. So we're at Ulta and she's like, wait a minute. Dolce & Gabbana is giving away a free gift. And I said, please tell me. She said the new Dolce & Gabbana perfume for dogs. What? Perfume for dogs? <laughs> that is that is crazy. <laughs> that is next level unnecessary shit <laughs> that you will probably end up buying. The packaging is gorgeous. I mean, it's Dolce & Gabbana. It's called Fefe, I believe. Alcohol-free fragrance mist for dogs made in Italy goldenrod yellow packaging goldenrod yeah wait what the fuck is goldenrod <laughs> it's this it's the shade of yellow such a turn on that word <laughs> goldenrod that's a sample card but then the actual perfume bottle looks like it's teal with a gold paw print on it and then a copper looking top she's very good at descriptions with ylang ylang musk and sandalwood and the olfactory family is woody and musty spray it i was just gonna spray it in this direction wait, not any the paper See, this is the packaging. I don't like that. I don't mind it. If it I just like your dogs just got washed. No, it's better than that. Well, <laughs> truth be told, when we were we were going out earlier this week, I was desperate for a scent, a perfume to put on my body. <laughs> and that's all I had. <laughs> so I was like, psh, 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 psh. and then I said, I text Lindsay and I was like, hey, um, bring like hairspray or any other smell <laughs> to, to hide this. Because it's not for humans. I don't mind it. Um, it just reminds me of a freshly walked, do fresh, freshly washed dog, and then you put on an essential oil. I don't think it smells woody or musky at all. Too florally. I like it. I like it. my dog's all natural. <laughs> Let's get into this week's segment of boys. Because... We have one of those here. Apparently, we're going to start needing one. Kick it off, Lindsay. I don't know where we're headed, and I look forward to following you. That was this one. Let's start drinking. Cheers. Cheers. Nom, nom, nom. Okay, let's start off with the most epic roasting of all time at brunch this last weekend. Let's set the stage. Our good friend newly started seeing someone. I think it's about six weeks. And our friend said, hey, how about the three of us go to brunch? And I said, that'd be amazing. I love brunch. And then at the last second, turns out, surprise, guess who's coming to brunch? Mystery guy, the, the boyfriend. And I, at first we were kind of like, hmm. But Lindsay and I can make anything amazing. We make everything. Well, I mean, we, really, we, we can. We can make or break it. Let me just put it that yeah. way. <laughs> we can definitely make or break it. So we go, we go to brunch. We didn't know he was coming. We didn't know. And at first it was kind of a little bit of a disappointment. It's kind of a bummer that her guy crashed girls brunch because we were so excited. Just the girls. And you know how I feel about having friends. I don't think I've ever gone to a girls brunch before. I know. I haven't been to a girls brunch in a long time. Yeah, I've so never really gone. Pumped about it. And not just like a, a combo. I know this one person who happened to invite me. No, these are my friends and we went to brunch. And that doesn't happen very often. So he joined us. And then what happened, Lindsay? Take it from there. Most epic fucking thing she's ever done in her life. It was so... Okay, go ahead. We drove there together. We didn't speak in the car. And then... Because I was like, mm, I just want to be with my friends. Wow. Guys, got and he drops us off at the door. We're like, which was really very that, nice. That's nice. It was a nice. Time. We go to sit down. We have our booth. He comes in to sit down. No one's really saying anything. And I'm like, let's fucking go. I because it's that awkward. It's silence. like the awkward silence. No one's gonna say anything. And we have to get to the bottom of this. We gotta get the ball rolling. So I look at him, arms on the table. She leans in. I lean in, and I said. Why did you feel the need to come to brunch with us today? This is the first time in my entire life I've been speechless. I couldn't even make eye contact. You were hitting me like, oh my God, what? I like looked out the window for what felt like a very long time. 
And her friend is looking at me kind of going shocked. Awesome. Let's go. We're going to fuck some shit up. I was like, let's do this. I love fighting. And it was like, but like smart fighting. Like you just gonna have to like tear into it. We failed to mention, we don't love this guy for our friend. Mm-mm. He's not good enough for her. Mm-hmm. He's doing just the bare minimum. And she thinks that's above and beyond. And we're trying to gently tell her it's not enough. You deserve above and beyond that we took this as an opportunity (laughs) asking the questions that she probably would never ask like if your mother was there and she'd be like how do you feel about children and um, when are you gonna get together like just asking the hard questions because you never ask these things Mm -hmm. when you're in the beginning you just pussyfoot around she gave us full permission to roast him oh yes yes she did that's exactly right we Mm -hmm. didn't just do this just because we're us like (laughs) just because we're assholes that's an excellent point Lindsay. she said feel free to go full court press on him roast him you will regret this (laughs) you ask and you shall receive i mean we're we're two dumb girls but we fucking know how to fuck down one of the questions i asked him where did you go to college he was kind of like mumble mumble jumbo like (laughs) i actually don't think i could pick out his voice if i ever heard it again i don't think i actually i actually don't even think i know what his face looks like i just know it's pink it's red and pinky we made him very uncomfortable the two of us we have gone to multiple dinners since we've been told you guys are a lot what the fuck that's supposed to mean we've been told that we're intimidating no bunch of pussies i know what were the best questions asked of this poor muck asked where did you go to college what was the answer he said something kansas (laughs) he answered army then you asked were you in the army or were you in the national guard he said national guard I bet that's what really made a man. I said, oh, why did you join the National Guard? I couldn't help myself. Cause it's so stupid. Ew, you're in the National Guard. Okay, well, how about this? If he didn't lie, he was in the Army. Full disclosure and said, I was in the National Guard. Cool. We wouldn't tease it apart if you just told us the truth. Exactly. He said, I joined the National Guard because it's my duty. I don't want my family to have to serve. I felt that it was a sense of pride and I wanted to do it. I'm like, well, yeah, and for free college, right? He's like, well, that that's secondary. I'm like, mm-hmm. He was- actually, you know what? We used our catchphrase during that moment because you asked him, "Have you been deployed?" Which he mumble jumbled, like, "Yeah, like Connor and like UAE." Yeah, UAE. He's talking with his hand over his mouth, so it's really hard to hear him. I'm hard of hearing. <laughs> it's a loud brunch area. The scene is so vibey. This is one place where it's okay for us to be very loud, mm-hmm. i.e. I can't hear you if you're not speaking loudly. Move your hand away from your fucking face. I want to hear what I have to say because I am going to grill the fuck out of you. <laughs> yeah, and he said, UAE. And we're like, we're just two dumb girls. We don't even know what that is. Mm-hmm. We were trying to give him an opportunity to speak up and be a normal person. He couldn't hang. We're a lot. We're really intimidating. Okay, but also our friend is like us. She's typically yeah, yeah. loud, opinionated. She's louder than us. Oh my God, she's so much louder than us. She's just like one of us. So if you don't like us, news alert, you might not actually like the real version of your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I hope he listens. We should send him this link. I love this one. What sports did you play in high school? <laughs> he said I ran track in country, country in eighth grade. <laughs> so what did you what did you play in high school? He's like, nothing. Oh, so you didn't play any sports in high school? Not a team sport. You know how I feel about not playing a team sport. I fundamentally feel that everyone needs to play a team sport because it teaches you so many life lessons i was a point guard for years look how that transferred into life i'm still the point guard Mm -hmm. i don't know what i am but i'm here (laughs) with you (laughs) i'm on her team she seems to win a lot so uh, for men specifically Mm -hmm. as little girls were raised differently we're raised to play nice with other girls if a man doesn't play sports in high school we are done here Red flag. Um, it is a, a deal breaker. Over the course of this brunch, he is sitting there with his arms crossed Ugh. and over the mouth. The face is getting very red. I was getting so red. I could not look him in the eye. It was. I did. I'm not scared. <laughs> Lindsay's a little bitch. I wouldn't look in his eyes because he was seated across the table from me. So I'm trying to do better about looking. Oh, my God. I'm so fucking hot. It's so hot in here. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Pretty sweatshirt. Um, but I looked in his eyes because I knew that uh, that's what I should do. And I, the guy was very angry. But even if he hadn't been angry with us, his eyes are not friendly and or like inviting. That's how the rest of the brunch went. We grilled him. He wasn't really hearing us. Well, we he were didn't... telling him. This is another point that we were making. Hey, you guys are long distance. 
you see oh, each man. other on the weekends every other weekend and he kept on making the point it's so weird we never fight it's so weird oh, yeah Lindsay we never fight double down on mm-hmm. that one i'm like why would you be fighting you have known each other for maybe two months you are here on the weekends it is a vacation every single time you right. are in town you don't know the day-to-day you don't know what it's like to live with someone and have the little annoyances pile up and he's like no it's like the same as living in the same city i'm like absolutely not he's like we bought groceries together we've <laughs> we've gone on a road trip to the mountains okay fun that sounds like a fun trip to the mountains we picked up on his negative energy that boiling under under Mm -hmm. the surface anger that is fighting to get out to fight with somebody he Mm -hmm. looks like he's angry we are 37 and you've never had a fucked up marriage you would get more credit if you had been in a relationship that failed Mm -hmm. rather than no relationship at all that means everyone has run for the hills to our friend do you not see a red flag apparently it's always the girl's fault why he's single is because a girl always does something. Yeah, his red flag is that I travel too much for work. And then why is he single? Because a girl always does something. What does that mean? I don't know. Like but- what? The girl does something <clears throat> for him to leave? I think that means he feels disrespected because he's always saying that word. He's, he's a freaking control freak. Yeah. And the second he loses he looks control crazy. And, the, and the girl is like saying, no, you cannot control me. I'm going to do what I want to do. He cannot stand that. But then he feels disrespected. <laughs> then he throws a bitch fit. So we blow his spot up. He leaves and he's like, I'm going to go walk her dog. How are we going to get home? And he's like, you can walk. And I was like, I don't want to. I'm laying on really thick. Uh-huh. I, you know, so the guy leaves. And we're annoyed and we're like, he just fucking left us and he like stuck us with the bill. Ew. Turns out he did slide the credit card to her under the table. I bet he was so proud of himself for that fucking move. Mm -hmm. I'm not convinced he's a pilot. I don't believe it. I've watched one of my favorite movies. Catch me if you can. (laughs) I do not believe he's truly a pilot. I do believe he's a pilot. How do you know? Uh, Did you see his little clip? Well, no. I don't know. Just the fact that... Where's his hat? A pilot doesn't walk around in uniform all the time. But we saw his suitcase. He left things at her house. Us girls are be girling, and then we have to debrief after he leaves. And of course, we're like, no. I'm like, mm-mm. There is something brewing under the surface. I cannot quite put my finger on it, but there is something not right. He just looks he, mad. He's giving off controlling vibes. I know it's not 100% blatant in your face, but there's not something yet. there. Not yet. Mm-hmm. She alluded to it when they were driving back down from the mountains. It was tense in the car. Mm-hmm. I don't like feeling tense with someone. It mm-hmm. makes me very anxious. It reminds me of a fucked up childhood or my ex. So we continued to brunch for a couple more hours. Then we moved to the next spot. It was a great and then we moved day. to the next spot. It was a great fucking day. We started brunch at 11. And then by this point, it's 6 p.m. I don't know if you checked in or maybe she said, okay, we're still hanging out. And she wasn't really texting him because why would you? You're with your friends, right? Around six o'clock, he sends her a text. Hey, I'm going to drop your keys off and I'm going to catch a flight home. Because he's a pilot. Because he's a pilot. And the plan was for him to stay another day. He oh. was throwing a hissy fit because she didn't go home after he knew coming in for the weekend. She already had plans. I think it would have gone differently if he hadn't joined us. Yeah. I think that we should have just met him. Hi. Okay. Bye. Or go to brunch and then meet him later. I don't know. He just could not handle the fact that she was doing her own thing. She gave him a heads up like, hey, I do have plans. He drops the keys off. They say bye. That's it. And of course, we're riling her up. We're like, yeah, fuck that. Like, you guys are broken up now, right? Okay, text another guy. The next day, she sends a screenshot and she sends him a text. Hey, would you like to talk about last night and figure this out? He responds, only if you want to. That's master fucking manipulation right there. She said, yeah, don't you? He said, I'm not going to wait around all day for you. He's not worth waiting around. He's not worth waiting around for. I'm like, you're talking to her like that? That's so disrespectful. Here's the thing. He wants to know what he can get away with. And he figured it out. This is going to be a perfect girl for him to control. Yeah. She's going to crack at some point. Sooner than later would be great. Uh Uh-huh. I agree. What's it going to take to crack? I don't know. With my friend, too, who's now moving up to the mountains to live in a TV. When do you snap out of it? They're going to have to do something really bad, but multiple times. Our friend that we went to brunch with and pilot man, they're still together. They never actually broke up because he comes back with, I was triggered. I was feeling disrespected because you weren't standing up for me. Okay, you're a man. Stand you're up for yourself. Fucking pussy. Fucking pussy. I hate the control that he has. In my book, he already has three or four strikes. First, he came to brunch with us uninvited. Second, he can't hang or take any shit from He didn't girls. have any banter. He had no banter. Like, he could have found a way. He's making her chase after him. And, oh, it's up to you if you want this to work out. Why does she want it so bad? Oh, no. 
you're only getting sex like maybe once a week. And it's not even that great she anymore. Said it's boring after two months. That is 10 red flags right there. Actually, that's more of a red flag than any of the things he did. Mm -hmm. You're going to settle for bad sex now, too? I know. And mind control? <laughs> Look, if he was a great, I celebrate it. But if he's a dick, and mind controls you. Other lesson learned is that we should host a roast. We, we are so good at it. Or you can hire us. Do you need your boyfriend roasted? Call us. I want to get a got you. I want to get a boyfriend just so we can roast him because I enjoyed it. I called my roommate. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm having the best time. You're not going to believe what we're doing." And he was like, oh, "Kelsey, the two. What about your friend? This is not going to go well." And I was like, "I know, but she said it was okay, and she promised she wouldn't be mad." And I was like, "So we did it, and he's upset." He's like. Oh, uh, girls. Mission accomplished, I guess. We fucking crushed it, but we sniffed it out. Yeah, we did. We did our job. You should thank us. You're welcome. Tip of the hat to you. But now she's hiding. She knows we know the real. What do we do? I cannot fully support this relationship. What you, well, the question is, what are you going to do? I know. It's really not about her because she's made her choice. She's made her choice. And... We didn't even talk about him when I talked to her yesterday. It's almost avoidance tactic. If we start... It's called shame. It's probably going to cause friction between me and her. And I don't really want so, that. Not so. only that, but every time he comes in town, you'll never mm -hmm. hear from her. Mm -hmm. You'll never do anything with her on the weekends, right? And then she won't come to you when there's a problem because she knows you don't approve. I'm her best friend and she has no one else to talk to. The other people she talks to are just like, yeah, it's fine. And we'll support her, but it's hard not to be like, what the fuck? We told you in the beginning mm -hmm. you were making a bad choice. I know. I guess I do just have to support and then... You just can never bring it up. You think about yeah. what a guy would do. What would Austin do? He would stay friends with him. He wouldn't bring it mm -hmm. up and then just stay friends. Yeah. With him. And if it comes up, it comes up. If not, not. Yeah. But just know we're talking about yeah. yeah. But my friend in the yurt, that's the same. If she ever reached out, we would be friends, mm -hmm. but she doesn't reach out. I called our friend out. Just because this joker's in town doesn't mean you can't still honor your f That was uncomfortable for a second there, yes. but look, now she's calling you. Mm -hmm, I know. It was a very honest moment. I am very excited. Kenny and I have reconnected. Yay! I love that. Ugh. This is so exciting. I I'm still tearing up. That and it's so goddamn hot in here. <laughs> so fucking hot. I can't breathe. Kenny and I have known each other for 20 years. We kind of fell out. It was an unofficial fallout. I didn't know what was happening, why I would like reach out and it was like something happened, like an imaginary wall was put down. I think that's the best right. way to describe it. He was, it, he just wasn't himself. We've gone, we've gone decades. We've gone a decade without talking, but we were doing recreational activities together and it was so special. It just fills my heart. I mean, like he knew my dad when my dad was alive, he'd hang out with my parents. He even does like a, a fucking Bonnie. It's just <laughs> awesome. Right. For whatever reason, I couldn't put my finger on it. We never hiked last summer. We didn't ski the entire season. She's the one who taught me how to ski. And I kept asking. He was like, nothing's wrong. So now I'm left feeling like I'm imagining something. And I was like, well, what the heck's happening? So I'm on the phone with you. Tuesday afternoon, Cherry Creek. Something told me to get down there. I was supposed to like, in my mind, work, but I didn't work at all. I didn't even take anything out of the bag because this coffee shop doesn't even want dogs in there. So I was like, fuck it. I meet this girl. That's another story. But then I'm walking. And just as I timed it, I saw him going into this men's store. I asked you, I'm like, should I say hi? I'm like, of course I should. Of course say you should say hi. I know, but I was nervous. I was a little nervous. So I walk in. I have my dogs. He has his dogs. I walk up and I'm smiling. He's disoriented because his dogs want to eat my little dogs. And then, and then he does a triple take and we're walking out. He's like, do you want to grab dinner? I was like, yes, I do. We had dinner for hours. Oh, wow. We closed the restaurant down. Nice. And when he explained why, I was like, I am sorry. You're never supposed to take anything personally, but fuck that advice. That's fucking bullshit. Why else would a friend stop being friends with you if it wasn't because of me? Well, he was experiencing some difficulties in his marriage. It was such a difficult time. It was easier for him not to open up and explain. I understand. I get it. I have no judgment. I was like, dude, your <laughs> shit is real bad. No wonder. So he would tell me and I was like, damn, that sucks. So can I just tell you how good it feels to have matters of the heart healed up. We were crying. I was like, dude, I love you. You're like my heart. Even now, I hate losing friendships and trying to make new friends. It's something I'm focusing on and to lose someone who like I... I would do anything for that person. And I came home and I was telling my roommate, he's like, no, he's like, he's like, I know how much that person means to you. He's like right up there with Lindsay. And I was like, yeah, 
like left hand, right hand. So we're friends again. End of story. And you'll be going. So we're going to spend Christmas together in Beaver Creek. And then he's going to take me to Japan for my birthday. And then, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) And I love exclusive shit. (laughs) I love doing fancy exclusive shit. And this man loves that shit. I'm so happy for you. Oh, it was really special. We were supposed to do that big backpacking Mm -hmm. trip and he canceled on like, I wouldn't say the last minute, but certainly three Uh, weeks ahead. It was pretty last. Two weeks. So that hurt. And I told him, I love you, dude. And we were crying. I'm happy, period. I'm also happy for other reasons. Uh, Well, let's wrap up the happiness. Keep going. No, let's wrap it up. Okay, so. We didn't talk about anything. We talked about a lot of things. (laughs) We talked about huge cuddly critters, what we're buying, and boys. Boys! Boys! All right, we'll save my boys (laughs) for next time. Okay, make sure you like. Make sure you. (laughs) Share this episode with your besties <laughs> and like, subscribe, follow every year podcast. I'm honestly, she's smartless. Oh my God, I can't talk anymore. That's what I've done. Share this with it's your friends. It's so fucking hot in here. It's so hot in here. I can't concentrate. <laughs> we gotta go.